would like to comment or question, we'd be happy. This is the uh, audience participation interactive components. <laughs> and I think we have Tom still has his Donahue microphone, so maybe we can distribute <laughs> him throughout the audience. If, if anyone does have some questions, we'll pass the microphone around. And it's more like Oprah. Uh, Oprah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm thinking 70. <coughs> No questions? Maybe I'll, I'll kick off with one question about the, the notion of interactivity in the works is that you show has a, um, a, a kind of definitive web-based or exhibition context of one particular user engaging with the work to kind of alter it or modulate it, perform a number of operations which differentiate as a kind of sequence. Um, for example, this piece and then the other one that you had up here, which uh, the sort of brown segments that accumulate and aggregate in different configurations and slide around. Um, within the context of, of, the, of the user being an individual interacting with other exhibition, uh, physical <coughs> and digital exhibition, or on a, on a sort of web based version of that, can you sort of describe perhaps how, uh, whether you've had any conversations with how that mode of interaction? engagement with what could be a kind of client collaborate client collaboration with consultants in the even in the most prosaic sense of a you know client with an architect. How does uh, this sort of these methodologies perhaps uh, install themselves into producing uh, a kind of range of, of possibility field of variation uh, within an architectural production? I mean, I guess when, when you bring up the whole issue of conversation, I think also back to conversations that we had with um, people who do this kind of process, which is called shot peening. I mean, that's on a really prosaic and direct level about how to not only prototype something, but actually how to manufacture you know, a space that would, would incorporate these kind of elements, which are actually really um, appropriate for the kind of technology. The shot peening is normally used to form doubly curved uh, steel segments for the airline industry. Um, in that sense, that was a manufacturer in conversation with us um, about trying to actually increase his market outside of just the aerospace and saying, okay, well, you know, I would like to start producing these elements for architects. Uh, we also have the desire, and then the question is, Okay, does the client, how does the client begin to um, interact? And, you know, as we brought up earlier <coughs> with the um, Kitchen of the Day After Tomorrow project, that rather than architects, <coughs> excuse me, I have a terrible cold, so rather than architects uh, actually waiting to be contacted by a client and to be told of a sort of desire, um, we start to actually kind of put up an existing menu for interaction. And that's what we mean with this term purveyance, the purveyor, just as Twinings is the purveyor of tea, um, you know, since whenever, 18 something, uh, we become the purveyor of these, these goods, these urban goods in some cases, the, the toys in other cases, um, that one actually creates an interface which allows people to realize what the possibilities are rather than, than you know, waiting to be kind of commissioned, but rather producing a desire. Yeah, I mean, I would say just sort of following up on that, I mean, I think the, the, the client-based sort of practice model is something that, that really has been pivotal in terms of, uh, again, sort of in, in another scale of sampling in a way, that, that if there's a sort of a kind of organizational sampling, if there's a kind of typological sampling in terms of screening rooms and, and product tables and various ways of presenting material, there's also practice sampling, which is the, which is to the extent that, as Marcelin <coughs> sort of, uh, as Marcelin's saying, that we're kind of interested in in the way in which uh, music culture, for instance, works this way, right? That that it isn't really at one point it was a client-based structure, right? If you go back to uh, sort of uh, you know 19th or 18th century classical music, it was primarily primarily a sort of patron or client-based system. Uh, but that the contemporary model, and you could sort of reduce this sort of corporate enterprise or uh, the sort of uh, advent of commercialism and its sort of conflation with the arts, 
Uh, but, the, but it has sort of turned, if you look at the contemporary music model, you look at contemporary art models, in a way is about sort of a different mode of practice and moving out of kind of a, a sort of conventional, uh, as Marcelin's saying, kind of client-based structure of actually putting <coughs> material out there, almost sort of a kind of venture capitalist strategy, floating material out there through a series of different contexts, a series of different forums, cultures, and looking at what the potentials of interface with those cultures and disciplines are, and also its potential viability. So it's, for us, been also kind of a sampling project uh, uh, in terms of a kind of a level practice. I mean, and some of these projects are actually intended as, as kind of subtle provocations. I mean, a, a discussion that came up um, at the eFutures conference last June was, you know, the degree to which the architect or designer has a kind of responsibility um, because when we say we're questioning the notion of single authorship and we're interested in multiple authorship, you know, we would still say that there is a high degree of responsibility, you know, based on what we supply as a kind of menu for interaction. I mean, that's definitely a design decision um, that we make. But, you know, our whole interest is in seeing how other people actually begin to interact with these systems and that, you know, we can actually start to sample from from what they produce and you know it might actually make us rethink some issues of our practice. Mm -hmm. The interactive component didn't come through, but that's right. I'll just throw the provocation out there. Thanks for, your, thanks for your question, Tom. I appreciate that. In that case, we'll thank Marshall Gow and Chris Perry Serva. Thank you very much. Thank you.